Hey guys, this is Frozen Things Tears here, and I'm welcome back to another movie review. And today I'm gonna be doing a review on Renfield. So Renfield is the latest uh, Dracula movie directed by Chris McKay and stars uh, Nicholas Hout, Nicholas Cage, Avofida, and Ben Schwartz. Basically, the film tells the story of uh, of Dracula's uh, henchman named henchman named Arya Renfield, who has been the uh, Working for Dracula for ages, but the, but he he realizes that that uh, he deserves a life uh, outside of uh, working in Renfield because that's pretty much all he's been doing for his life. So he attends this uh, church group that that's the church uh, meeting group to uh, for uh psych um for um psychological uh, support uh, and stuff. And then um he gets into this uh, mobster uh, mobster that is uh looking for um Dracula um. And then um and uh, he he comes Renfield comes across this uh, cop named uh, Rebecca and, and, and uh, once he meets Rebecca he 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 he, he find, he's able to find life and uh, and he he must um uses uh, the the life that, that he's making in a way to uh get away step away from working with Dracula um yeah um so yeah uh Renfield's a movie I've been kind of excited for when I saw the trailer. Like, I've heard of this movie before, I've heard of a movie that I read, but I was like, eh, I'm not just dead. I don't know what this is, but like, I decided to check out the trailer for it, and it looked really interesting, not gonna lie. Uh, and also, I remember get, uh, getting this trailer when I saw uh, Scream 6 and John Wick Chapter 4 theaters, uh, good times. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm not really a huge fan of Dracula movies. Uh, yeah, Dracula and Toad, uh, could have been good, but it was it, it, it kind of a waste of potential, and it it tries way too hard to be uh Lord of the Rings, but with Dracula, uh, but it's not yet. Yeah, I, I um actually watched Dracula at when it came out, like but uh, at home, not in theaters, and it was pretty decent at, at first when I when I saw it, but yeah, it's not it's not good, and don't is don't get me started on the uh, hotel Dracula movies movies, yeah, those uh babyish uh, cartoonish. Uh, Jacket, um, Dracula movie, but it's probably the most annoying Dracula I have ever seen. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I don't like this trick. Yeah, um, I'm saying Brian Hole, I can't stand him as Dracula, even though I do have some respect for Brian Hole, he's a great YouTuber, but he shouldn't have. But I think uh, Dracula was just the wrong uh, character to start with when it comes to actual voice acting, but yeah. Hotel Jacksonville before another time, I may do a rant and I, I may review these movies eventually. Uh, but yeah, now we got um, a, a new Dracula movie with uh, Nicolas Cage's Dracula. And the thing that interested me, interested me the most is Nicolas Cage's Dracula. I think that is a perfect casting. And I would say Nicolas Cage is one of my favorite actors, but I know that Nicolas Cage has a, a huge fan base, and I can totally see why. I, could. I mean, he has some really great films, some be low budget movies as well. Uh, like. Willy's Wonderland, for example, which I still I'm sorry, I, I still hate Willy's Wonderland. Um, I I think it's Willy's Wonderland is uh, just a fire as a phrase rip off. Uh, and um. And yeah, so um, but I, I um, even though Dracula um isn't really the main character, the main character is actually Nicholas Holt's uh, Arya Renfield. Nicholas Holt is an uh, it, it's kind of an underrated actor. I think this guy deserves far more recognition. I mean, I, um. X um I, I loved him in X Men um Beast and X Men I think Beast is still uh Nicholas Holt's best performance in my opinion yeah Hank McCoy yeah, Beast yeah from uh I don't remember from all the X Men prequels and then you got him in, in the menu which is a phenomenal movie although I although um Anya Taylor was the main reason why I love Menu Menu the Menu is amazing yeah it's a masterpiece and highly recommend watching that film. Um, but yeah, now we're getting to um, th this uh, latest film, uh, Renfield. Oh yeah, and also, by the way, I do want to talk about also the fact that Aquafina was it. Yeah, literally, Aquafina is in um, almost um, every movie nowadays. Like, th there were some roles where like, I think she, she felt uh, unnecessary and she didn't really need to be in it. She was just there just for the sake of uh, being there. Um, but... Um, but then uh, she was great in films like Jumanji, um, Jumanji, um, Shang Chi, and then this one. But yeah, so all of those things combined. Uh, um, even though Aquafina was like, I was a little worried about her. I was like, I mean, is is Aquafina gonna be necessary here? Like, 
But then when I saw the trailer, I was like, okay, yeah, this could, could be one of her better, better performances, but yeah. Um, unfortunately, though, this movie had mixed... This movie has some mixed reviews. I was hoping that the... This... <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was hoping that this movie would not get the... Uh, when I get bad reviews, it looked like a film that would get bad reviews, but I, I wanted to get good reviews because it looks so much fun. At first, it got actually a, a, a pretty good review, um, a very good score with a 86% of Rotten Tomatoes, and I was really happy that Rainfall got good reviews uh, because uh, this this is the type of movie that, that again, could have gotten bad reviews, uh, but it, it didn't. Unfortunately though, the ratings declined and declined and declined and declined, yeah. It, it's almost like, um, the similar, it, it's kind of a similar, um, rating decline to, um, Wonder Woman 84, where, I remember, it started at 80, it opened at 89%, but then it sank lower and lower and lower and lower until it reached, uh, 58%, uh, and, uh, Wonder Woman 84 is actually one of the more hated uh, comic book movies in recent years, and I think that movie's still over here, but yeah, it has nothing to do with Renfield. I'm just saying, it's just, but I just meant to say the rating drop kind of reminded me of Wonder Woman 84, where it was really high, but then it went down to, to rapid, yeah, and that sucks, so. Um, but then, yeah, um, oh yeah, also, I forgot to mention as well, this movie has the same director as the Lego Batman movie, uh, which, yeah, I think the Lego Batman movie is still a great film, and not a lot of people uh, seem to talk about it. Uh, but and then he also did the Tomorrow War, which is underrated. Uh, but yeah, after seeing Renfield in theaters yesterday, I gotta say to you all, this movie was really good. I had such a good time with Renfield, and it sucks that the critics uh, um get gave this movie a, a, a rotten score. Yet Pierre Ben and Wendy get a fresh score. Yeah. I think the critics uh, j clearly just hate fun with this the Super Mario Bros. movie. Both movies are both movies are an absolute blast. They're really fun, but then the critics just feel uh, screw fun. This movie is still they're still bad. But yeah, Renfield is one of the more entertaining movies I've seen this year. It is just a lot of fun, and yeah, one, uh, and yeah, um, and yeah, th th this is really good. Um, I don't have a lot to say about it, but I'll try to get to my talk about my research uh, as best as I can. But I think my mom, I, um, one of the things I was most looking forward to is seeing the action and the gore. Even if it's said that, that it's a comedy horror movie, this movie feels more like an action movie, like almost kind of like a superhero movie. I mean, you see, yeah, I mean, this movie had tons of action scenes, and I mean, really gory action scenes. Yeah, this movie is gory. Probably the goriest movie I've seen in theaters, like, Probably, um, yeah, it, it feels even more gory than Scream 6 for some reason, which is uh, really surprising because Scream 6 uh, literally took uh, gore to a whole new level, but then we got this movie right here, which uh, took uh, gore to another level, like even more than Scream 6 did, even though Scream 6 is, even though it doesn't really, um, top Scream 6 is my favorite movie of the year so far, in my opinion, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, it, it's not one of my favorite movies of the year so far, but it is still an excellent film. Um, but yeah, um, I think the action scenes were, were really, uh, really paid off. I mean, they're a lot of fun. Like, there's a lot of really cool stunt work, and Renfield himself is a badass. Yeah, I mean, he, he really fights so well, and uh, there's like so many, go so much uh, gore in here. Um, like... Um, yeah, um, there's so many like bodies that were like um chopped off a lot. Yeah, like like really um such a massive uh, ton massive tons of blood uh, coming out and and then um there's a scene that I, that I, I'm gonna get to later, which is the best part of the film. Yeah, bodies get uh, sliced off a lot, and man, it is really. I don't think this is a horror movie like what IMDb suggests, so, like, like what the internet suggests. It's more of action comedy with just a spark of Dracula. Even though this movie technically isn't about Dracula, it's a, like what I said earlier, it's like the plot. It's about R.M. Renfield uh, trying to uh, get back and trying to uh, live a life. Big um, since his life has mo mo has been about being ser being a servant of Dracula. Um, and I think uh, the the characters are really well written as well. I think, um, specifically the three main characters, which are. Um, the, the three main characters, yeah. I know people saw this movie for Dracula. Surprisingly, he was not the best part of the film, like what, like I was expecting, but he was really, he was such a really good Dracula. I think he is the best Dracula, and 
This movie is the the, the, the best Dracula movie. Screw uh, the whole Thousand Chances of Rain franchise. And this is how you do Dracula. This Dracula looks so um, intimidating. And you can tell that Nicolas Cage really had had a lot of fun with uh, his his performance as Dracula, uh, his role. Um, and and I love his so uh, over the top uh, silly nature as a uh, Dracula. Uh, um, and then um, there is uh, the main character, Nicholas Holt, R.M. Manfield. I want to say it's one of his best roles, but top three roles. Uh, like what I said, the uh, Hank McCoy slash basic from the X Men films is his best role with, and then and also Tyler from Menu is, is second, but then this one is third. Uh, but yeah, I really like R.M. Manfield's Renfield. Seeing him trying to live a life, uh, seeing him uh, tr trying to. Uh, Live, live a life and, and, and wanting a life after Dracula and man he has such cool powers so, yeah he's almost, he's almost like a superhero which is why I described it I said this movie felt like a superhero movie because of Aaron Manfield himself uh, there is a part where he literally um he, he literally um and usually um he um would uh, um eat bug he, he would eat insects uh, to uh to, 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 to get super power to get superpowers and I think that's such a cool concept like uh, even for, for even for a superhero um, even though he's not a superhero he, but he kind of felt like one but uh, even in terms of a superhero that is such a cool concept of uh, seeing him trying to um, get superpowers by by eating insects that is that is a kind of superpower I have uh, never seen before and then um and then there is the villains. Besides, you know, Dracula himself technically being the main antagonist of this film, uh, there is also another villain that I really like. Um, I really like Ben Schwartz as Ted Lobo. Yeah, um, I'm sure you guys probably know uh, Ben Schwartz as uh, the voice of Sonic from the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. But to be honest, I like him in this one better than the Sonic movies. So. Um, I'm not sure if I would say this is better than Sonic Hedgehog 2 when it comes to Ben Schwartz's movie. I think it's definitely like, but definitely better than the first Sonic movie. Um, what I like about, you know, um, Teddy Logan here, he's just uh, such a fun, over-the-top villain. Uh, yeah, um, such a fun, over-the-top villain, and Ben Schwartz gives, like, such a really, uh, entertaining performance. Like, I had a blast of seeing him in this. I didn't think that, uh, Ben Schwartz, uh, villain, like, would be good, because... I mean, I mean this movie did have uh, seemed like it had a lot of villains. There was also um, there was also this character named Ella. There's this this uh, villain named Ella um, who is also not a villain. She's fine, I guess. I think Ella is, is an all right villain. Uh, but I think Teddy Lobo and the Dracula are are, are, are the two uh standouts of the villain. And then we get to the this my uh favorite character in the film and. I didn't, I didn't think she was going to be my favorite character. I thought Nicolas Cage would be the best character, but my favorite character in the movie is Aquafina's Rebecca Quinty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you, you I'm sure y'all know um Aquafina in a lot of roles. Yeah, she's uh, like she's everywhere nowadays. I mean, you know, she was in uh, Ocean 8, um, you know, um she was just in Ocean 8, which even though I don't like Ocean 8, I think Aquafina was the best part of that movie in my opinion. Um Jumanji, Shang Chi, uh, Ryan the Last Dragon, um, like all great, great performance from her. Uh, I I have yet to see the farewell, but I really want to check out the farewell soon because I'm very sure the farewell will be uh would be um Aquafina's uh, best performance. I just need to watch it first. Uh, but yeah, um, right now my favorite Aquafina performances, why I haven't seen the farewell yet, is uh, Shang Chi and uh, Renfield both tied. Yes, this is Aquafina's best performance. Right on par with uh, Shang Chi, uh, it's not better than Shang his performance Shang Chi. I mean, I, I would say if I were to choose one, but among the two, I say her performance in Shang Chi is the is truly the best. Like, I love it when she like literally became uh, um, the better version of the live action Mulan the in, in the climax. That was so cool. Uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, I felt feeling in this one. Like with Shang Chi, she she plays another badass character who's a cop. Uh, Who's who's a cop and she really does not engage in the fight. In fact, yeah, she, like she shoots a lot of people and she like throws knives at people and she helped the uh, Renfield that uh, kill Dracula at the end, which is really cool. But but on top of it all, she actually has an arc. I mean, 
she, I mean, you, um, you may think that, that uh, she's, at, on paper, she seems like uh, just your average uh, love interest for Renfield, but she actually does have character. She actually has an arc. Uh, and yeah, um, and you really feel bad for her. Basically, she lost her father and she's a cop, but she's kind of like trying to get the vengeance. Yeah, um, something like that, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, um, now... Yes, there are flaws with the movie. I do have a few flaws, so I'm gonna get to uh, these uh, flaws. Um, uh, these flaws. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, I I already said one of my flaws. I think Ella is a mad villain. I think she's just there. It should have been just uh, um, Dracula and and Lobo uh, being the villains. But I think Ella felt unnecessary. She felt kind of unnecessary, and she didn't really need to be in the film. Um. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention about um Rebecca Quincy. Uh, she also had this um arc um of trying to uh save her sister uh from Dracula. So yeah, I really uh enjoy that part. Uh, Dracula and the mobsters. Yeah. Uh, specifically the mobsters, but technically the mobs the the mobsters are uh are also like have 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 a connection with Dracula. But yeah, I think uh what um. I think this movie felt a little uh, far too short. Uh, it's only an hour and 30 minutes, an uh, hour and 33 minutes. Uh, and I mean, people uh, criticize the Super Mario Bros. movie for uh, being in 90 minutes, but I totally understand why uh, they made the movie 90 minutes. I would agree that the Mario uh, should have been longer, but from, from what we got, I mean, it's still really good. Um, I mean, the, the, I mean it, it didn't really affect the movie. That um, I think things there were explained uh, pretty solidly. Uh, the story is pretty solid, not great, but yeah. Renfield though, I think the, story, the writing could have been better. Yeah, sure, I love this concept uh, of a, a, a henchman trying to, to henchman a Dracula, trying to get alive and uh, stop working for Dracula, but I feel like a, a, um, a much longer runtime would uh, have more uh development story development uh it should have been like around an hour, at least an hour and 15 minutes long or maybe like 10 to 15 minutes like an hour 45 something like that uh, so um it can uh benefit better from more uh development um and um and also there's some plot points in the movie that kind of didn't make sense and it was kind of like a plot hole a lot of runtime is needed to fill those plot hole like i mean i feel like um Having Rebecca um arrest uh, Redfield that uh, came out of nowhere uh cause you know Red um you see like Redfield morning and uh, Red I, I I thought the Rebecca um already knew that Dracula existed and uh, she I mean you should realistically um Rebecca would have thought that uh, knew that you know the 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 mobsters uh, came into the came into the uh um uh, meet the meeting church and uh, killed everyone or either them or Dracula but. Why would she? Why would she um, arrest her? Uh, um, why would she arrest you? Um, Renfield uh, and uh, and then she suddenly just hates him for no reason. Um, although I would say Renfield and, and Rebecca do have great chemistry in this. Also, but I think that but I think the the biggest plot hole in the movie is uh, how exactly did the um Dracula um betray Renfield and Dracula betray each other? Yeah. I knew that that was going to happen based on the trailer because I knew that Dracula was going to be the villain, but like, and, and based on the story, yeah, he, he didn't want to serve Dracula anymore, but like, how they handled that uh, plot point, uh, having, you know, Renfield, uh, um, having uh, Dracula find out that Renfield betrayed him, and also it's not really well explained as to how exactly he, f how exactly um, Renfield betrayed him, and why, I mean, the explanation is really like, not well written, and it's kind of confusing. Again, a longer runtime would probably explain it better. So yeah. Um. So overall, Renfield is such an underrated film. I think it's. A, yeah, sure. I I think this movie uh should have uh, had a longer runtime to fill in a bunch of plot details. Uh, um, but uh, Renfield is such a good time. This movie is entertaining from start to finish. There was a, uh, not a single uh, boring scene, and uh, I think the, I think this movie shows that the critics do hate fun, and I think they need to understand what fun is. Uh. Sometimes it, it's a, it doesn't have to be about the plot, it, um, it's just about entertainment. Uh, yes, you need to have a good plot, it's important, but too many entertainment is what makes me enjoy a film. Sometimes you may have a good plot, but but it's not very entertaining, and, and I don't want to go back to it, but yeah. Really, Doug Grandfield, I think this is the best Dracula movie. Not one of my favorite movies of the year, but it's really good. So with that said, I'm going to give Renfield 
a 9 out of 10. So also from my reviewer friend Theo, the, what is your opinion on this movie? Uh, do you agree with the critics that, that this movie uh, did not live up to its uh, content and it was not and not as anything as you think? Or um, do you agree with me that this movie is better than the critics make it out to be and it's really good? Comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for other videos to come. I might review Evil Dead Rise, but I'll think about it. I'll see if it's worth reviewing. Um, also, I got a bunch of uh, projects to talk about as well. Uh, a bunch of videos to do. I'll see which was the next one, but yeah. Bye, guys.